right, Simon. Uh, I'll tell them. Goodbye. What did you hang? Your rich cousin, Simon. Simon? Where is he? I have a bill. The darling of the family is in between trains for an hour, so he's coming out by cab from the station. Oh, he might, so I better take myself off and straighten up the house and change myself. Molly, for Simon, don't bother. You're going to impress a rich man with a split level? David, please, I've got to make myself presentable. Well, I am getting ready to leave. My train is going within the next 45 minutes. David, darling, maybe you'll take a later train and spend a few hours with Simon. Sorry, Molly, dear. My Sally, the doctor, my grandchildren are more important to me than cousin Simon. Did Simon say why he's coming? Oh, to me not, but I'm sure if he's coming, it's something for you to do for him and not vice versa. David, is that something to say? I said it and I mean it and I'll say it again. If Simon is coming, it's something for you to do for him. Oh. Coming. One minute. Goodbye, Goodbye Molly. Goodbye, And give my love to the children. I will. And kiss everybody. Have a wonderful time. I will. And David, don't eat sandwiches on the train. I won't. Bye. Simon. Well, all I have to say is if your cousin Simon is coming, it's something for him, not for you. You don't have to say your cousin Simon. You can say cousin Simon. He happens to be your cousin Simon by marriage also. Which delights me no end. Thank you. Rosalie? Yes, Ma? Oh, you're standing yet with your hair on your head? Cousin Simon will be here any minute? If Cousin Simon is coming, Ma, it's something for him, not for you. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Daughter like father, exactly. Rosalie, this minute I demand silence and go upstairs and come down because you'll be here immediately. All right, Ma. Simon is here. Jake, you're reading? Well, whose cousin is it? Jake, now is not the time to discuss, but, but remember. Well, hello, hello Molly. Hello, how are you? <laughs> and how are you, Jake? Hello, Simon. Nice how are you? Nice to see you. Give me, a, give me a hat and coat. Well, certainly. Here you are. Good to see you, Simon. Well, it's good Let to see you. you. How is everybody? <laughs> fine, fine. Family all well? Yes, everybody's yeah. fine, sure. Well, well, well. Nice. Very, very nice. We're coming up in the world, eh, Jake? <laughs> it's a far cry from your Bronx apartment. No, it's <laughs> modest, but we call it home. Ah. Hello, Cousin Simon. Oh, hello, Rosalie. How are you? Say, Haverville is certainly making you bloom. Thank you. <laughs> Where's Sammy and Uncle David? Sammy well, lives at the dorms now in college, and Uncle David oh. went for a few weeks to his Sally, the doctor. Uh, Rosalie, uh, bring in a little snick snack, huh? Oh, I almost forgot. Here's a housewarming gift for you, Molly. Oh, Simon, you should. I picked it up at the railroad station. I don't like to come to a new house empty-handed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sit down, Simon. Thank you. A very nice present, Simon. It's nothing. Molly, I have a real housewarming gift for you. Oh, Simon, you shouldn't. The candy was enough. Oh, no. This is something special. Yes. You know this Park Avenue apartment house I live in? It's going to be torn down for an office building. But my new apartment is not going to be ready for four weeks. So I'm going to Europe. Continent. Yes. So? So what am I going to do with my help? I've got a couple working for me. Francoise and Mignon. He's a chauffeur butler and she's a cook. Jewels. Absolutely jewels. I've never had help like that before. Uh, what are you getting at, Simon? At this, Jake. I'm not going to be able to use it for four weeks. I'm going to be in Europe. Now, if I don't pay them, they'll find another job and I'll lose them. So, I thought as long as I'm paying them, I might as well send them up here and let them work for you. I'll pay their salaries, they can drive up in my car, and for four weeks you have a chauffeur, a cook, and a limousine. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm telling you, folks, you will really learn what it is to really live. This is my housewarming gift to you, Molly. You mean it, Simon? If not for you, Jake, for who? Favorite members of my family? Simon, I'm beside myself. Don't be beside yourself, Molly. Just say you accept. Simon, a butler and a maid and a lemon zine. <laughs> <laughs> Jake. 
We accept, <laughs> Simon, with many thanks. You will have the time of your life. <laughs> you really a <laughs> Ma, I can't find any single sheets for your twin bed. I have double sheets for Uncle David's bed. Ma, you don't have to change all the linen, do you? Only the bed in Uncle David's room, I thought, if that's where they're going to sleep. I want all the beds changed. Ma, why all the general cleaning? I thought that's what the servants were for. Rosalie, please, I don't want to be embarrassed when the help walk in. Upstairs in the linen closet, you'll find all the linens you want. Will you see? Can look, please? Good morning. Good morning, Papa, darling. Where's Mama? In the kitchen. Molly, I... Molly, this moment, up from that floor. Oh, Jake, please, let me do it my way. For four weeks, I'll be a lady of leisure. But do you have to kill yourself first so you won't enjoy your leisure? Jake, please. What is this revolution you're stirring up? What is it? You'd think we were entertaining the Duke and Duchess of Marlborough Castle? Jake, please, the help are coming, and I want my house spotless. What time are they coming? Sometime today. Well, if they come in time, Molly, send the chauffeur down to pick me up and drive me home tonight. Goodbye, Molly, darling. Goodbye, dear. Bye. Bye. Come in, whoever. But walk very lightly on my floor, please, whoever. Uh, are you the lady of the house? Oh. Yes. Oh, excuse my appearance. Uh, Rosalie? I am Francois Gravé, and this is my wife, Mignon. We were sent in by Mr. Simon. Oh, yes, I know. Yes, ma. Uh, uh, this is the daughter of the house. Mademoiselle. How do you do? Uh, Rosalie, take the folks up to the east wing. What do you mean, wing? Do you mean Uncle David's room? Yes, yes. <laughs> Something wrong, not right? It's a three-quarter bed, Ma. When we work, Madame, we need our rest. Of course. We are used to sleeping each in a bed. Surely. Rosalie, take the folks up to the west wing. Where's the west wing? Our room. Where are you and Papa going to sleep? In Uncle David's room. So go. Right. David. The baby has the whooping cough, and my son is taking the family to Atlantic City, and I don't like the seashore. Uncle David, you're back. Yes, Rosalie, I'm back. <laughs> Ma, now what are we going to do? Where are you going to sleep? We'll sleep on the convertibles. Why can't they sleep on the convertibles? Guests to sleep on the convertibles. Not in my house. So you see how we divide our duties, Mignon and I. And that is the manner in which we will take care of the house. Uh, with Madame's approval, of course. Wonderful. Bon, merci. Now, we have been making an inventory and a great many essentials that Madame has undoubtedly forgotten to order. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. But quoi? Mignon, s'il vous plaît. We need de la mayonnaise, du laurier, de la moutarde, du thym, du persil, des échalotes, de l'ail, des capres, des oignons rouges et des petits oignons blancs, des anchois, des sardines, du pâté de foie gras, Des truffles, du poivre en grain, de l'huile d'olive, du vinaigre et de la pâte d'anchois. That's all? Oh, I suppose this will be sufficient to begin. Uh, then I will take care of that, oui, madame? Uh, now, uh, for tonight's dinner, would madame care to glance at the menu? Okay. Oui. Merci, madame. At what time would Madame care to dine? Well, usually... We... Mignon, dinner will be at eight, of course. N'est-ce pas, Madame? Yes. Now, has uh, Madame any preferences in wine? Although I uh, don't know what vintages are available in Haverville. Well, uh, your preference will very well. Merci, Madame, à votre service. Now, if uh, Madame will be so kind as to call the butcher, the grocer, and the wine merchant to authorize the necessary purchases. 
Merci, madame. Merci, madame. <clears throat> New style? Why not? Very nice. Uh, why don't you change, David? Not me. An old dog, you can't learn new tricks. <laughs> but Rosalie, you look lovely. Hmm, very nice. I love getting dressed for dinner. It's like going out. Mm -hmm. Uncle David, you have a cutaway. Why don't you put it in? Not up? me. If you don't want me to sit on the table, I'll go next door to Lucy or Daisy. Uncle David. Molly. Molly, you look gorgeous. <laughs> my, oh, my, oh, my. <laughs> Molly, you too? Well, Minya laid me out on the bed, so I put it off. Ma, you look beautiful. I do? I never saw you look prettier, Molly, darling. The last time I wore this dress was at Frida's wedding. At what time is dinner being served? Dinner at eight. Who wants to wait until eight o'clock for dinner? I'm hungry. Shh. Madame, dinner is served. Thank you. Come, everybody sit on the table. I'm hungry already. So come. Huh? My dear? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the name, please? Artichaut Vinaigrette. That's something to eat? What is the soup called, Francois? Potage Saint-Germain. It is a specialty of mignon. <laughs> That's not something to mind. Huh? Fish up. de bœuf à la papa de Robert. Papa I hope madame enjoys it. Oh, immensely. What's your turn of dough, pompe I don't know, David. I don't know. <laughs> mm, delicious. Merci, monsieur. Mm, it has a beautiful... Um... Je ne sais quoi. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That is because it is cooked in fine wine, madame. Au vin. Well, my You're only 17. Not too much au vin. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me the truth, Molly. Did you ever eat something? <laughs> Fire! Where's the extinguisher wearing? I hope Madame enjoys cerise flambe. Oh, Janet Quack! Yeah, 
Bonjour, madame. Oh, bonjour. Bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour, Jake. Bonjour. Un moment. Mais oui, madame. Bonjour, madame, monsieur. Jake, hurry. Hurry, Jake. Oh. Oh, Bon appétit, monsieur. Merci. <rire> Madame. Monsieur. <rire> <rire> Will Madame be using the car this afternoon? Yes, I'll be going to the super. The super? And where is that, please? The supermarket. For Madame, all your marketing has been taken care of for you. Oh, then I'll let you know. Merci, Madame. Molly, how much longer? How much longer? For two weeks now, vinaigrette à la flambe, cookies Saint Jacques, orange salad dogs, Molly, give me your noodle soup, your plain boiled chicken. So what can I do, David? You can't look a gift in the mouth? Oh, David, leisure is only a pleasure in the dictionary. So where would you like to go riding? Not me. I get seasick in that car. I'll call uh, Daisy. Daisy's busy marketing. Mrs. Peterson. She's doing general cleaning. Mrs. Clawson. She's baking her leg in the clinic. Has Madame decided yet? Prepare the lemonzine. I'll be out presently. Madame. So where will you ride, Molly? Around. Around where? Around and around. Come in. Jake, I want to speak to you. Can I wait till tomorrow, Harry? I don't want to be late for dinner, and the car is waiting. Jake, I think you ought to know what's going on. Well, what happened? What is it? Do you want to give your stenographer a raise? Do you want to give your shipping clerk a raise? Are you in a financial position to increase your showroom staff? Why are you asking me foolish questions? You're the bookkeeper. Of course not. Then I suggest you stop coming to business in a limousine with a chauffeur. Why? Why, he asks. Everybody thinks you came into a lot of money. <laughs> Harry, Believe you know me, better, Jake. This is no laughing matter. But, 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 Mrs. Temple, if you'll stop talking and let me talk, so maybe you'll hear what I have to say. Molly couldn't talk to you because the help was present. But today's the day off, and she'll be able to talk to you freely. Yes. Ah, oh, please, don't get mad and don't hang. Oh, here is Molly. She'll talk to you like a person. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Hello? Mm, she hung. Who? Mrs. Temple. And she's mad. Mad? Can you imagine? Everybody's mad. Mrs. Temple, Mrs. Peterson, Mrs. Carey. Millionaires we are all of a sudden. That's the consensus of opinion of the whole community. Something has to be done, David. Francois Mignon has to go. And Simon's present? I can't afford such presents, David. What time is it? They'll be back soon. It's their day off. Oh, but they come back for supper and then they go out again. Filet mignon they order for supper. David, I don't know what I'm going to do with the bills. I don't know how I'll pay the bills from the market. Steaks and steaks and chops and pheasants and truffles and schmuffles and caviar. I told you. And Mrs. Stillman said that she heard that you're building a new ten-room house with three bathrooms. Only three? <laughs> Mrs. Carey heard five. Molly. Molly, why did you let me do it? Did you hear the latest rumor? What? We're building a mansion on top of Flower Hill. And I heard we're building in the valley. Here. Here, look at these bills from the garage. Gasoline, simonizing, washing the car, oil. And from the liquor store, champagnes, vintage wines, 20-year-old scotch, 50-year-old brandy, drambouille, cherry herring. 
I'll be in debt for the next six months. Your cousin Simon gave us some present. Ma, who told Joan's mother that we're buying the Judge Gray estate, the one with the swimming pool? Nope. Now it's in a safe. The grocer wants to know if you got your bill. I did. He said not to worry. He's in no hurry. He only wishes he had more customers like us. I believe him. Molly, this can't go on. Uh, bonsoir, madame. Uh, we have just returned. Excuse me, but I can't seem to find the filets I ordered for our dinner. Oh, the filets arrived, Francois. You'll find them on the second shelf in back of the Petit de Faux grouse. Merci, madame. Well, how many more weeks before your cousin Simon returns and will be released of the rich man's burden? Two weeks. Two weeks? Fine. I'm calling Pincus Pines. We're going there for two weeks. Jake, please, I'm not leaving the house. Rosalie's still in school. Do you have a better idea? Let me think and let me ponder. Well, think and think fast, Molly. This is beyond the poor man's pocket. Harry. Evening. Well, Jake, we lost our cutter. What do you mean? Just what I said. He gave me an ultimatum. A raise or else. But didn't you explain that the limousine and chauffeur belonged to my cousin Simon? Uh-huh. He wouldn't believe me. Well, how is that possible? The man knows what's coming into the shop. I'll tell you something else, Jake. I'd like a raise, too. But, Harry, you know our financial status. How can I afford to give you or anybody a raise? How can you afford to build a 15-room house in the country club section? I'm building I a... got it on very good authority, Jake. Harry! All right, Jake. Maybe my wife's theory is not so wrong. What theory? You can know a man your whole life and not know him. Now, stop before you say another word, Harry. I'd better stop before I say more than I should. Good night. Good night. Good night. Can you imagine? My honesty is in question. Call in Francois. Please, don't call. I think I have a better idea. Hey, don't look at the ambulance, you see? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> oh, please sit still. Do you have everything you want? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Merci, yes. merci beaucoup. Drawing here, you can know? Mm-hmm. Very much. Right. Right. Not looking so well, Mignon. Have a little circle, sir? Well, I feel fine. Yes? Mm-hmm. Well, maybe our present climate in this continent don't agree with you. Oh, we are, we are fine. Yes? Mm-hmm. I suppose you've been to Switzerland. Oh, no, of course. Yes. Well, we also have mountains in the United States, just like Switzerland. Mm -hmm. They have lakes and rowboats and trees. And if you'd care to go, well, oh. Mr. Goldberg would only be too glad if you went on a two-week vacation. Deux semaines de vacances pour nous. Dans les quatre skills. Gratuitement, mais c'est formidable. Je très bien, mais oui. Ah, is it weaving? Oh, oh why not? Course. Oh, vous êtes Thank you very much, madame. Vous êtes très gentil. Oh, vraiment. Vous êtes très gentil. Vous êtes très gentil. Merci. Vive les quatre skills. Bravo. All right, operator. I'm holding. Who are you calling? We're going to Pincus Pines for two weeks. Jake, uh, uh, Hello, Pincus. May I, please, if you will, kindly. Thank you. Hello? Hello, Pincus. This is Mrs. Goldberg. Yeah, we all well. Listen, I, I want to make a reservation under the name of Mr. and Mrs. Grave. I'll hold. Grave? They're having the vacation? Yes, Pinkers? What do you mean? What do you mean you're all filled up? Not even one room. So what do you have available? Oh, my gracious. Only the bridal suite. Molly, who can afford it? Well, just a minute, Pinkus. Hold, please, just a minute. Can, can you afford, can you afford steaks and chops and pheasants and pheasants and, 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 and flambés and cherished jubilees and, and vintages and wives uh, and, and champagnes? Pinkus, reserve the bridal suite. 